this video we're going to be talking about inlays. We're going to be showing you how to do inlays where you can get very precise wood inlays with no seams. You can do this relatively quickly and inexpensively. You can also add other details, inlays on top of inlays. And all of this is done with just thin material so your cost is kept fairly low. So let's get started. Good inlay begins with your geometry, whether you import it as an SVG, as in this case, a DXF, or you draw it yourself. You need to go through, make sure that the geometry is clean. Eliminate any extra vertexes, Make sure that your geometry is smooth, set your tangencies. And I like to go through and radius over my corners. Not a lot, just a little bit. Which just helps to create smooth paths. Put all of your paths together. Highlight them. Go ahead and select Vector Group. In the Vector Group, select Alternate. Highlight any of the geometry that you want to be part of your inlay. I like to use a 60 degree V bit. And my depth, I'm going to set 10 thousandths of an inch deeper than the thickness of the material. Do be sure to measure the thickness. It is not always what it's advertised to be. Also going to put a cleaning pass. The speed of the bit, let's go ahead and configure this. I'm actually going to set this to be relatively slow. Slowing the speed down doesn't really add much on these outer pass to the time it's going to take to carve, but does help to just make sure that we've got very clean, very smooth paths. For our pocketing, I'm just simply going to go ahead and use a uh, eighth inch end mill. Go ahead and hit accept on that. Once that's rendered, go in and see what the paths actually look like. We can click on our render high resolution so we can actually see our paths here as they're actually going to be cut. And you'll notice that in the corners of all of these paths, let me zoom in here, you will see spots where the eighth inch bit is not able to get. Now you can radius those paths out more to eliminate more of that. Either, or just simply we use a chisel to chip those out after everything's done. It's up to you. Once we're happy with all of our geometry, we're going to go ahead and save our board. I'm going to go ahead and make a new board. Set up the size of this board. And we're going to make this the same resolution 512 or whichever resolution you made your original piece. I'm going to go to the your original piece. We are going to select all of the geometry. We're going to copy that. I'm going to go to our new board and we're going to paste that. Then we're going to go to um, our flip and rotate options and we're going to flip horizontally that now gets us the mirror of the geometry we can go ahead and move our individual pieces wherever we wish once we have all of the geometry laid out the way that we want it let's go ahead and select all of the geometry and simply apply a bit to it now the bit we're going to be applying is going to have all of the same parameters that we used in the vector group. So I'm setting the same speed and feed that we had. 
also setting my depth to the same depth that we used and applying a cleaning pass. Now we can compile that and go cut some parts. All right, so we have our cutting board loaded into the universal jig. We are gonna be using manual placement, so we're gonna be locating in this hole right here. That'll allow us to be able to put the cutting board back in after we have done our inlay and do our secondary operation. While the pockets are being cut into the cutting board, let's go ahead and get the inlay material set up. All right, so we put the shelf paper down on our backer board here. Uh, it's just a cheap peel and stick shelf paper. We've also put it on the board that we're going to be inlaying with. We're going to go ahead and use the uh, Super 77 uh, spray adhesive. And we're just going to go ahead and spray that on this piece. We'll let that dry a little bit and then we'll go ahead and stick that in place. Once the parts have been cut, you can use putty knives to release the wood from the shelf paper glue combination and then peel the parts away from the shelf paper. The next step is cleaning up the pockets. You need to make sure to scrape away any mill marks, any uh, shavings that are hanging on in the corners. You need to make sure that you've removed any material from where the pocketing bit was not able to go. There will also be times when you have a little bit of an interface between the V bit and the pocketing bit. Make sure to scrape that away. You want to create a good flat surface. Don't leave any debris behind. If you do, the piece will end up rocking. So clean your edges. Make sure that you've gotten all the debris around and fit your pieces in. They should actually fit in nicely and they should kind of feel like they wedge in. As long as you do this, you'll end up with an inlay that doesn't have any gaps. Once you've got the parts fitted in, you don't have to fit flush, but you do want them to fit in nicely. So once all the pieces are fitted in, happy with the fit, you can start gluing them in. The main thing to keep in mind when you're gluing the parts in is to make sure that you get glue you know, complete coating of glue. You want to be sure that the glue is all the way up on the edges. Don't worry about getting a little bit on the outside. We can wipe that off and clean it up later. Once you have all the pieces glued down, use a wet cloth to clear away the excess glue. Now note that the pieces will tend to swell and curl up. Don't worry about that. We're going to handle that when we press the parts. Now, in order to press the parts, I just use a simple heat press, a book press, anything that gets you a high load. You need a lot of load, let it dry overnight. After it's been pressed, you can see we've got to sand all of this down, get to one even level. Now that I have the inlay done, I've gone back to my land project and hidden the pockets which we used for the inlay and added back in text using centerline text. All right, so I have the, uh, the inlay finished. We've got that sanded down. So now we're going to, got it mounted back into our universal jig. So we're gonna go ahead and put the text on it. And I will be using the manual jig, so we'll be using the locator the same way that we did when we did the pocketing originally. So everything should line up nicely. Let's go cut this. All right, here we have the lettering cut out. Next step, let's go ahead and fill this all in with some black epoxy. There you have it. This project took a little over 40 minutes of carving time, some attention to details but the results are well worth it.